Hello and welcome to another video on the exoskeleton project for the next prototype of powered armour. And in this video we're covering quite an important part and that is the spine, something quite difficult to get right. So we'll jump straight into my old design, go over it, go over why it worked and then the problems I had with it and then design the new one and get it fitted to the new exoskeleton. So I can show you all the spine design that's currently on this one. I'll be taking the legs off and probably taking the chest plate off so we can get to it properly. And now I've taken some of the armour apart, you can now see into where the spine is. So what we've got here is we've got a bracket at the bottom attached to this belt with a centre shaft through the middle with universal joints on either end. These are mounted to two steel tubes which slot into each other. And then on the sides you can see you've got springs. That allows you rotation left and right essentially and adds some stability with the springs. Now this does actually function pretty well even if it does look exceedingly rough. You'll also have to understand that because the legs aren't on this design, it is all kind of sagging. It is designed to have weight pushing up on it or basically down from the chest. Now, because this is still mounted on the frame, I can't really move this enough for you to fully understand the movement in it. But for that, I've got some drawings ready. And here is quite a horrendous drawing that I prepared earlier. And this is time for me to ask you to like and subscribe. So hopefully in the future, I'll have more time to spend on these drawings and make them a bit better. Nevertheless, how does the current spine design work and how do you get the full range of movement you need to do? So you've got these springs on each side, you've got the mounting brackets on the top and bottom, the top one going to the chest, the bottom going to the pelvis region. And then you have a universal knuckle joint at the top and a universal knuckle joint at the bottom attaching to the middle. Each one being mounted onto a tube that goes into the other, kind of like a telescopic pole. What that allows is essentially the leaning of the torso left and right. As one spring will compress, the other will expand, and then you've got the knuckle joints to allow the movement in general. The weight of the suit is supported straight down, basically the shaft with the universal joints on. That then essentially limits the compression that the springs are under just from the weight of the suit. This is kind of adjustable. You can pack this center out so it rises up and down a little bit. You can also move it on the suit on the bolt holes here, but it is quite limited if I'm honest. And then if we go to a top down view, because it's mounted in two tubes that basically fit into each other, they allow basically rotation of the body left and right. So you can imagine the springs are flexing left and right while your body basically turns around the shaft. While we're looking at this view, you can see I've added all of these lines on the bracket. That is to signify how the bracket is made on the old one. So the bracket for the old one is basically just made out of many pieces of aluminium machine so that when they're all stacked into each other, you can then bend them into this shape. You need this shape or at least an offset from the center shaft so that the springs can act on the weight of the suit and the user and everything from all angles, from all axis. If you had those springs in line, with the shaft, you'd basically have no real tension for the overhanging torso piece that would be here. Which you can see in my third horrendous drawing. This being the torso piece, this being the belt piece, so naturally the springs need to hang over the back to allow for extension. Something else that worked well on this design, it basically allowed for physical irregularities, if you will. So if the belt was in a little bit compared to the torso, depending on how it sat on your body, it didn't matter because you had the knuckle joints here that would essentially, that way it would basically morph to the user's posture without an issue on the user. Another thing to think about when it goes to the spines is the suit is having to move around the user. So if you imagine your spine being here, basically where I've done that horrendous drawing, if your spine was here and you bend over, then you basically need these pieces to all extend a little bit which while extending off of the tubes would put weight on the user. It did give you the movement that you needed to do that. However, I don't know how much it's necessary to have that actually extending when you think about the amount of padding that's gonna be on the suit. To essentially arch your back and bend down, that is probably only gonna extend by 10 millimeters. There's gonna be 10 millimeters of padding and basically flesh movement. So it's probably that big of a deal. If we just go back onto the top down view, Something else that's important to recognize is that when you rotate basically left and right, when you rotate your torso left and right, you're rotating around your spine, not the exoskeleton spine. So as you rotate in the exoskeleton, it helps if you have a spine design that can do this type of thing 
because you need this degree of movement to allow the exoskeleton to move around you. For example, if you imagine here is your spine as the wearer. If I put my pen down here and rotate the paper, you see how you're not rotating on the shaft of the exoskeleton, you're rotating on your spine. So the shaft has kind of got to move around your spine, not your spine, move around the shaft because I'm pretty sure that'll cause some injuries. That is something this design did work well for. So what are the problems with this design? One, how I made it out of aluminium, quite problematic. Took a long time to make and still looked rough. And then the other issue was how you attach these springs. So you can't just have say shock absorber fittings like on a mountain bike because you need it to extend as well as compress. So what I had was bolts and washers that basically go through these pegs here that hold the springs in place, but allow them to both compress and expand. Issue is it's rough, it wasn't that secure, and it made quite a lot of noise. That being said, we'll go over my next issue with this design, which is actually the main reason I'm changing it. Now that hopefully clears up the range of motion that happens with this design, you might be wondering why am I using a weightlifting belt? Well, the bottom of the spine needs to be attached basically to a high waistline point above the hips, as you're gonna have a load of structure for the actuators for the hips and all of the pivot inside of that. So because when you bend down and everything, your stomach expands and contracts and your flesh expands and contracts quite a lot around your stomach, even just with how much water you're retaining, you need something that's quite flexible and comfortable. Now, I did try various actual designs that I made myself that were basically like semi-rigid belts. And then I realized it was just a waste of time. They were less comfortable. So I just ended up using my own weightlifting belt and attaching that, and that worked pretty well. However, this being a leather one, it's not perfect on the comfort size. So for the next one, I'm gonna be using a cheaper, but actually better for this, in my opinion, a Velcro belt. That should make sure that any pieces like this don't end up kind of getting stuck and jamming you in the stomach as you bend over. But here is the problem with this design, even though I'm now actually quite pleased with the design and how it works, despite the fact it obviously looks very rough. And that is that it's reliant on having something like a spring that can both compress and extend to provide stability. Now, these springs do provide that, but the problem is because I'm not buying many springs and I'm in the UK and dealing with any cart style of manufacturer is incredibly difficult because if you're not buying a lot from them, they basically don't want to deal with you. I found it very difficult to get any springs that would work as well as I needed them to work and that allowed me to mount them properly. Also, out of all of the springs that I bought, I never actually ended up receiving the spring that I actually wanted. I'd order a spring that was three millimeters thick or five millimeters thick and it wouldn't come correct. It'd be the wrong length or the wrong diameter or whatever it was. And frankly, the spring manufacturer just didn't really care because it was only going to be a 40 or 50 quid order for a handful of springs. Now, something I have looked at is using gas struts like this. The problem is with these is there's not many that are small and there's certainly not many that have a neutral point in the middle, particularly with small ones. So I haven't been able to use these in a way where you can do it purely with compression. There's multiple ways to do the design with it extending, but just not compressing. So for this next design, instead of gas struts, we're going to be trying to use some elastic from resistance bands and try to get it work that way. Also, to make sure that this isn't rough like this one, I'll be getting rid of the conventional UJs and going with ball joints that'll be on an adjustable thread so it can be adjusted up and down however the user needs it to be. The elastic will also be adjustable on the backside. And instead of aluminium, I'm going to be trying to make this out of carbon fibre sheet machined and then some 3D printed parts probably out of carbon fibre PLA. That way, if I want to make them out of forged carbon in the future, I can make molds out of that 3D model. That's if I don't think any filament is strong enough. That way I can get rid of this aluminium mechanism at the back, which took frankly a lot of effort to make and make the mounting points a whole lot simpler and easier to change. With that hopefully being understandable, we'll go into CAD and see the new design and how it's gonna look. And here we have the CAD design. So we've got the top and bottom which is where the ball joint is going to fit into and lock into place. And then on these sides, we have the elastic that's going to sit in these grooves here and then have these plates that go over the top of them. So it'll then sit like so. Grip the elastic and get the tension desired. You'll also notice all of this is basically offset. So you've got the ball joint 
and the shaft that will be offset to where the elastic is thereby mimicking the spring mechanism of the old design. We've also got this little piece here that goes on the inside of the ball joint to make sure that all stays secure. Now with these pieces removed that will be carbon fibre PLA at least for this version you can see there'll be a centrepiece of machine flat carbon fibre plate that will make sure all of this is a certainly strong enough to hold the entire weight of the suit. One of the reasons I'm doing it this way as well is so if I want to cast any of these pieces out of forged carbon fibre in the future I can just make some 3D printed moulds and do that. That's if of course carbon fibre PLA or PETG isn't strong enough. If I rotate round to the other side, you can see how these will be nice and flat and should fit under the back armour casing properly. So we'll have ball joints in the top and bottom and then we'll have a threaded shaft that runs through the centre of this middle piece here. That'll have a threaded sleeve through the middle of it so it can be adjusted in and out. I think that's about it, so I'll get all this printed out, get the carbon fibre machined and we'll see what it's all like put together. I've now got all of the carbon fibre machine pieces cut out. You've got the 3D printed parts cut out as well. As well as all of the little bits that have finally turned up so I can put this together. Including the ball joint, which should just about fit in there quite nicely. And that's the ball joint, just about fitted in the bottom pieces. I did get this measurement wrong, unfortunately, so I've had to trim and then heat and then press these in. I'll just grind off that bit there so I can fit the carbon to it. And we are nearly all built up. Two mistakes I've made for this video, unfortunately, is that these bolts aren't long enough so I can't wrap the elastic round twice. So I'll have to correct that in a future video. And these sleeves, these threaded hex sleeves that I bought to go into there. So you've also got plenty of adjustment on the ball joints themselves so you can open it and show it easily. These are a coarse thread as they normally are and of course the ball joints are fine thread which I should have known but I didn't even think of that. So in the meantime I'm going to 3D print a sleeve and then order some proper ones which I'll have to fit in another video. But I can at least get the boots mounted onto the ball joints and get all that sealed up. And there we have it all assembled together. I will note this is severely under tensioned on the elastic but again if I tension it correctly for the armour then it won't really be wearable or usable for this video off a of trialing on the exoskeleton in general. Plus of using these ball joints is you can then have these nice rubber covers so it's all dust proof, keeps all the grease in. In the future when I have the correct threaded sleeves I'll be able to have basically a threaded bar running through the middle so you'll be able to extend it or contract it in, thereby making the whole thing much more adjustable. You do have a pretty good range of motion and even though it's under tensioned it does spring back. The only thing I'm slightly wondering about is if the ball joints have enough room. Now what I do like about the ball joints is the fact that they do have natural limits. So, you know, that's kind of the limit that you're going to get out of it. But then I do wonder that if you are bending down, is that enough? So you should be able to see at this angle how you do reach a stop going to about there. But I have to think how much should you be arching your back? It probably is enough, but I guess we'll find out. The other thing is the neutral point for when you stood up straight might actually be more like that. It's hard to say at the minute. Which, if that is the neutral point and then you go to bending forward and over, that'd be quite a lot. But to find that out, I'm going to have to fit the weightlifting belt to it. So I did just put it on, mark a centre point with a piece of tape so that I can then drill the bolt pan to it and get it attached. And that is the belt fastened on. As normal, I've forgotten to order those bolts as well, so flathead bolts work pretty well. You can see button head bolts do stick out, but I'll add those to the list. Now it's time to fit the spine to the rest of the exoskeleton for previous videos, but before I did, I did just want to note where the back armour case is actually going to sit. So it turns out I did actually get the depth of all of this correct, so this will, in the future, slip nicely under the exoskeleton and fit nicely in between the actual armour casing itself. However, for this video, I will be taking this casing off. As I mentioned in previous videos, I'll be reprinting this and making a better one, but I've kept it on to get this eye up, if you will. Now we've got all of the skeleton built up with the spine piece on it. You can see you've got the belt attached to the bottom. We've got the arms mounted to the sides, or at least the frames. I'm still missing some of the Velcro and the sleeve for that side. But you can see what it now looks like, it's all built up. And this now gives me the opportunity to replace this part with carbon fibre, like the rest of it. Something I couldn't do until I had the spine and the arms on, because I didn't know exactly how it was all going to sit together. Which means there's one thing left, and that's to actually try it on, see how it all moves with me wearing it, see how it all fits. So, I've now got it on. 
Firstly, a couple of things to bear in mind. Not only did I forget to get all the bolts I needed, I don't have a sleeve cell for this, hence the tape. And I don't have the proper hinges on the shoulders yet. Still kind of yet to decide on which ones I'm going for. That does mean there's two hinge points on the shoulders that is basically held on by a rubber. So if I move my arms too much, they might come off. However, I should still be able to demonstrate the spine movement. Also, the back piece in general is meant to be fastened onto the torso, basically, when the chest plate comes down. So there might be a little bit of a gap on the back. That's normal when there's nothing basically strapping it to the front. Firstly, I have to say I'm pretty pleased about how the whole thing actually fits onto my body, how it even sits straight, which is surprising when those rubber hinges holding the arms on are nearly breaking off already. And as you can see, I've got pretty good rotational movement on the spine. You can see how the exoskeleton spine is actually moving around my spine, not the other way around. The only thing that is a little hard to judge at this point is just if it is actually moving enough. That's just because the belt is obviously going to move around with my waist a lot more now compared to what it will do when I have the pelvis pieces on and the hip points on. But what I can say from wearing it is because those ball joints are brand new, they are quite stiff and I could physically feel them moving as I rotated my waist, so I do know they're actually working in that regard. As for bending over, I really wasn't sure if there was going to be enough movement in it, but I actually think there is going to be because I just don't think I should really be bending down that much without bending my hips and using my legs. Something that I was pleased with and I think is actually more important is how much movement it feels like you've got doing this rotating to the side, dropping each shoulder. If you imagine doing anything from a boxing uppercut to just balancing on one leg, you do actually kind of use this oblique movement quite a lot, in some ways more than you do actually arching your back to pick something up. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with how it's all fit together, how much movement's in the spine, how kind of secure it actually feels, and it should be way better with the increased amount of adjustment I've got on both the length and on the elastic side. And there we have it, I like to think the exoskeleton in there is now coming along nicely and roughly on time. It does feel to work pretty well, of course I can't fully tell exactly how well it works and whether something needs adjusting until I have the hip pieces on. That will be the next video on the exoskeleton, probably in a week or two because the next video will be a new tech eye. That should actually help timing as the hips are quite a big thing to manufacture, there's quite a lot of moving parts, especially as I want to be able to put the legs on separate to the chest pieces. After that it will be the legs and the boots and then it will be time to put the armour on after that with some testing. So I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next one.